Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Health Force Podcast. I am Fran Ramsden, RamsdenEliteFitness.com, RamsdenEliteFitness.com. Well, as promised, as promised, I gave a little sneak peek last week in our podcast that this week's episode will be a little bit more fun, a little more entertaining, so uh, it's not going to be as heavy on information and content and science and research. It's going to be more of a Q&A style, so to speak, in terms of uh, some information we will digest from others, and then I'm going to weigh in and give my two cents. Now, the theme of today is going to be how it seems like almost every single person, because they have something called Google, is now a fitness, health, fitness, and wellness expert. Expert. And we're inundated with opinions, which of course everybody has one, uh, ideas, which, of course, everybody has one. And it's led to a society and or an environment right now where if you were to ask, and this is an experiment that you can go ahead and try, go ahead and make a Facebook status about, hey, what protein powder should I use, question mark? Or, hey, uh, what diet should I go on next, question mark? Oh, what pre-workout should I use, question mark? If you ask any sort of health and fitness question, on a social media platform, you're going to get comments, 5, 10, 15, 50. I mean, you're going to get input. I think conversation is good. So again, we want to set the, set the stage for, for today's episode. Um, I want people to conversate. I, I want that discussion to happen. What I don't want, or the, or, you know, the thing that I find uh, harmful, is that when people are discussing things, they're coming from a source as if they're an expert, right? They're coming down from on high to give their opinion. And you could tell by the way that, that they're communicating that they seem very matter of a fact about a lot of things. And oftentimes, it's completely opposite. They are you know, speaking pseudo, you know, pseudoscience, uh, in other words, propaganda, uh, misinformation. And I think that actually has a harmful effect. So you know, that, that's, that's the tough part about having discussion, right? I want discussion. I want free and open conversation and dialogue. And yet, uh, unfortunately, we may have that currently. It just seems to taper off into the world of uh, nothing this really. So today we're going to go through, uh, I've got four sources, uh, four different little pieces of information which we're going to try to digest. I'm going to give my commentary. Some of it's going to anger me, so be prepared. If that's something that you enjoy in this podcast is when I get uh, a little revved up and, and, and into a certain subject, you're bound to hear it plenty today. If that turns you off, well, then this isn't for you, uh, this episode, because we're going to be dissecting so-called self-described experts or <laughs> just watching the average person really give their opinions uh, as if they are coming from a factual standpoint. So the first one's going to be a video. It's from the Joe Rogan podcast, number 904, Gary Taubes. Gary Taubes is unfortunately a soul that is uh, on the verge of of being lost right now. We have cited him numerous times on our podcast uh, as an opposing viewpoint to, 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 to this program, and for good reason. Um, the man is a master of pseudoscience. This, this actual, I, I've, I watched this podcast. I got about 30 minutes into it, and I uh, turned it off. I was dozing off. I was, was put into a slumber. Um, which is hard to do, actually, you, especially if you disagree with me. Usually, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat, you know, and and, and wishing I could give a a, uh, a comeback or rebuttal on a lot of things. And and uh, unfortunately, I found somebody that can put me to sleep and disagree with me at the same time. Um, now it's a two and a half hour podcast on uh, Joe Rogan's uh, on Joe Rogan Experience. We're not going to listen to the whole thing, but there was a clip that I found uh, within that first thirty minutes that I. I um I sat with and and really really gets to me because these these individuals really do have a completely different mindset and it almost makes me feel like they believe it you know I think for a long time I I was in a, in a state of mind that that believed a lot of these pseudo experts were doing it on purpose in order to sell their product or supplement now I still think that happens however what I am questioning is whether they are even consciously aware of what their opinion is based in, which is nothing, and how they've almost deluded themselves into believing their own opinion based on nothing. 
And I still contend that's for the very reason that if they were to go backtrack now, like Gary Talbs, his big thing is sugar. And if he were to somehow come out, and he actually even admits it in the podcast, that if it were to come out against sugar, that people would fear his career would be over. And I, I, you know, and I would put myself in that crowd that, yes, it would be. Um, you can't come back from something like that when you're going all in to this point. Um, like, I'm against – like, here's the funniest part. Right? This, is, this is the drawing contrast. Like, I'm against added sugars and sugars in general. I don't think it's very healthy to consume Skittles. That's not a good source of calories. So on the face of it, me and Gary would agree for the most part. 90% of the things that we would discuss about sugar, we probably would agree with. My issue is that the 10%, he goes all the way. He's 100% against sugar. I mean, he, he doesn't even want you, it's to the point where he, he, he you know, has developed this theory that uh, there's an insulin resistance model that, oh my God, sugar has this effect on our insulin and it makes us store body fat. So no matter what, it's all about sugar. And, and that's just frankly untrue because even uh, in in his scenarios, well, then you know there's no place for carbohydrate. You know, it's keto or die. It's keto or nothing. It's got to be a high fat diet. That's the only way. They these guys simplify our human bodies, man. They don't give it enough credit. Your body has been a product of evolution for thousands of years. You think like we just woke up in 1990 when we were born and our body was just that way. Oh, no. <laughs> We're talking thousands of years of your body going through the environments, learning how to supply itself with energy. Um, there's a reason we run off of glucose because it is, you know, as a nomad or as a, tri- you know, a tribe, uh, glucose, sugar was most uh, available in fruit trees and bees, honey, things like that. So we've come to operate off of glucose. I, I would argue that's the way it is. I don't think it's a bad thing consuming sugar. But, uh, of course, uh, Gary goes to the extreme. So we're going to listen to a piece here. I'm going to interject. And, again, today's theme is a bunch of people think they're experts now, and it's become the cool thing, right? You're the cool person if you could talk about fitness for 20 minutes uh, or, in this case, two and a half hours. So let's play it. Just when my sugar book came out, there's a book uh, called The Secret Life of Fat written by a Ph.D., and it's – it's as though everything I've done in the past 15 years just was never done. Like somehow she managed to do an entire book on dietary fat where if anyone said... All right, I, wanna, I do want to stop here. <laughs> Gary Taub suffers from this maniacal self-aggrandizement uh, mindset. He, um, he just really feels he's important and has to talk a lot about himself. Now, to give you a little bit of backstory of this episode, I mean, they talked for about 15 minutes about... Gary's background and how he's gotten involved. The guy's a journalist. The guy's a journalist. He has no nutritional background. In fact, he tried to be an astrophysicist or you know, try to get into science and uh, was a C student, so he couldn't make it there. Got into journalism, uh, did a lot of paycheck-to-paycheck stuff, and then got obsessed about sugar, researched it for like 13 months or something, and you know, got paid crap for it. And now all of a sudden, he's this guy running around the world talking about sugar. Well, I mean... Confirmation bias, much, you know, or how about providing for your means, much? At a certain point, um, even myself would get sick of working for a year on about a half a year's salary, and uh, I would look a, look for a way to kind of monetize that, wouldn't you? I don't think that's a, that's a far leap. You know, I don't think it's a far leap to, to think that that may have come into play for him. And um, you hear him here. He's saying, well, I've worked on this thing for 15 years, and somebody wrote a book, and it's like they never even looked at my stuff. Gary, maybe because you're not taken seriously. How about that? You're not taking serious in the scientific community. You have now become the figurehead of the extreme keto crowd that thinks it's keto or nothing. Now, the rational position is that, look, there's benefits and there's uh, positives and negatives to keto. There's positive and negative to high, a high-carbohydrate diet. If you're going to go to extreme and say it's keto or nothing, you better have some solid evidence to back that position up. You do not. Therefore, you are a joke. You are not to be taken seriously. We use you on this podcast as mainly an example, as a foil of what not to do. The exact, the exact opposite of, of what to strive to be, which is open-minded, clear-cut, simple, not not egotistical, 
So here he is. I mean, the first. I mean, in this this clip we're, we're uh, currently listening to. He's talking about how somebody. How could somebody possibly write a book without even looking at my research for the last fifteen years? Oh my God! You're a journalist, pal. Congratulations. Let's move on. Said to her, talk to Tobbs. Even if he's wrong, his ideas are worth hearing because they're they're provocative and interesting. I'm not so sure he's wrong. She decided not to do it. So it's sort of. Do you have the so what was her conclusion? Uh, and effectively, it's all, you know, again, it all comes back effectively to energy balance. You could talk about the two, you know, overconsumption. Um, it's just, this is what dogmas do. They just, they, they, they reproduce themselves. They continue to grow. They're like tumors for that fact. And they, they, they basically fight off all challenges. They absorb around them, you know. So somebody start saying it's something else. Eventually, ideally, everything changes. So we're, we're definitely winning the sugar battle. So sh- I mean, do you hear this guy? He's winning the sugar battle? Gary, you're not winning nothing. You are embarrassing yourself time and time and time again. Every time you speak, I actually think less of you in terms of your intelligence. To be quite frank with you, at first, I thought there was at least a semblance of intelligence inside this man. You know, when I first got to hear the insulin theory, and I, oh, I said, okay, it's interesting. And then to see where he went with it was to the extreme. And now he's at the point where he thinks that calories have nothing to do with anything. You just heard him there. He's criticizing somebody because their diet book said it's about energy balance and overconsumption. Oh, my God, Gary. What a radical idea. What a – what pff, what a radical idea. And then he's going on here using terms like dogma. This guy, this guy, I tell you what. Talk about calling the kettle black. Um, that's one of the most deflective explanations of something I've ever seen in my entire life. Does, does this man even realize how well researched calories are? I mean, forget sugar for one second. Forget about it. We've been studying sugar since 70s, 60s, 80s. I, I get it. That's been studied for a long time. But I'm talking about calorie balance. Calories, energy. How about this, Gary? The first law of thermodynamics. When was that? That is essentially what the what theory uh, calories are based off of. And for those in the audience that need to refresh, the first law, thermodynamics essentially states that uh, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Um, it can be transferred, but it just doesn't go poof and it's gone. It's got to go somewhere or do something. So if food in calories is a measure of energy and we consume it, well, it's got to do something. It's got to go somewhere. We don't just eat it and it just vanishes inside of our body. It's either stored energy as body fat. It goes to rebuild things like muscle tissue um, or if it's broken down for you know those different processes on the, on the microbiology level. Or it's expended and burned off in terms of heat. So think like when you're working out, sweat, heat, etc. It's used up. That's really it. And unless you're going to disprove that law of, therm- of uh, thermodynamics – I don't quite get how you're going to sit here and call calories a dogma or call or call it anything of the above, you know, call it any, you know, try to paint the picture that's some extreme opinion model. It's um it's quite fascinating to me. It really is. So let's continue on here with this uh with this clip because again, we're just starting to try to get into the headspace of these other individuals and it's it's going to give you a headache sometimes. Sugar, even though the the official word is it's empty calories, we just have to consume less because they have this dogma that obesity is caused by consuming too many calories. So the way that a food influences your body mass is through its caloric content or how much of those calories you digest and absorb because if it's got fiber, you'll excrete some. And that's the that's the wisdom. If a calorie is a calorie, then the worst you could say about sugar is that it's empty calories. It's got no vitamins, minerals, micronutrients attached, and so we consume too much of it. And that people say it's the low hanging fruit. So it's not that it's uniquely toxic, because if it's uniquely toxic, if it actually causes disease, and we can talk about clearly what I'm saying it causes, then a calorie isn't a calorie. When you started doing this research and you st- is this guy boring or what? Not only – usually when these guys paint extreme pictures, they're usually entertaining. Like the food babe, I could – you know, her videos are actually easy to consume uh, because she um, she understands, I think on some level, that it's an, an, an entertainment proposition. That in order for her opinion to be taken seriously, she's got to be able to communicate in a way that people find enjoyable. But Gary Taos is frankly quite boring, isn't he? 
So he, he attempts to essentially disprove or down talk the rational thought behind calories, and yet, in my opinion, does very little of that. He speaks about sugar and the correct position, which is that they are essentially empty calories, which I, I mean, that even, I don't like the term empty calories because it's still energy. It's not like it's nothing. And I understand, again, not not to get too in deep into it, but I understand it doesn't have a bunch of uh, nutrients with it. It's just pr- pr- pretty much glucose and sugar. But that being said, I, I don't know what position, like, so it's toxic now? Well, go tell that to some of the African tribes that still eat 80, 85% uh, glucose in, in the form of honey or fruit because they're still doing uh, nomadic lifestyles. So go tell them they're obese. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, Gary. No, they're not obese. Oh, no, they're not. In fact, they're quite the opposite. They're probably on the, on the borderline of starving, emaciated, etc., when the food's not abundant, it doesn't matter what source it is. I, obesity is co- – obesity – okay, here we go. Gary solved it. Sugar is toxic and causes obesity. There. That's him in a nutshell. Yet he can't look at things right in front of your face that we have available to us that show the exact opposite of tribes, of individuals, of people that consume high-carbohydrate diets and that are not obese. And to like just see how effortlessly he he just dismissed the calorie in versus calorie out, uh, out uh, point of view. Oh, they just dismiss sugar. It's such a simplistic model. They don't understand the complexity of what I'm speaking because I'm Gary Tiles. I'm so smart. Guy's unbelievable. Let's uh, let's keep going with this. You started writing this book, The Case Against Sugar. What when this was all unfolding in front of you? Were, were you were you shocked? I mean, is this something that you were where you were saying? How am I, a guy who got a C plus C in minus, physics, C minus, sorry, C minus. quantum I'm to, physics? I'm trying to pump you up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how how am I the guy who's figuring this out? How how is this? Okay, so I understood why, but it is weird because again, yeah. I, I you know sometimes I, I was in Washington on uh, my book tour and I had dinner with the former chief science medical. Uh, science and medical officer of the American Diabetes Association. It's a very, you know, uh, influential, high-ranking, successful man. He's completely convinced that I'm wrong. And I said, but you, you believe this thing that obesity is caused by eating too much, and you have no idea why you believe it. So I can tell you exactly the history of that belief. Just like if we were to... Um, excuse me. No, we do know why we believe it. <laughs> So here we go. We have uh, transference where Gary is now going to tell us our own opinion and he's going to defeat that opinion that he puts on us. Um, This is the way they work. This is the way that uh, non-rationals have to go about their daily lives. They don't want to hear it on the front. When they hear that we disagree with them, they're going to try to now play psychiatrist and figure out why we believe that we're right and that he's wrong and then reverse engineer his own opinion now again to defeat us. It's... It's quite, it's quite an experience to watch this unvelop. And so now he believes he's about to go into the history of calories. And now he's going to sit here and he's going to tell us that somehow the history of calories is influencing us today, even though he self admits to it just now that we don't act, that most people don't understand the full history of calories. Gary, I can't even follow you. I swear to God, I would rather sit and do a kindergarten class. Um, a full day, not one of those half-day kindergartens, a full day of kindergarten class, then listen to you speak on end. I could not imagine sitting in front of you for an hour. You can't stay on point. You don't complete your thoughts. You bounce around like a a uh, tennis ball. And now you're going to tell me what I think and why, even though you just said, I don't know it, I don't know the background, and that this is why I'm wrong. Well, this will be fascinating, shouldn't it? Talking about relativity, we can go back to Einstein, and you would know about Einstein. And if, even if we were talking quantum physics, we'd go back to Heisenberg and Schrodinger and you know Bohr, and, and you'd know about them. But this belief that you're fundamentally arguing is right, you don't understand where it comes from, and I can tell you that. And I'm going to give you the documents, I'm going to give you the papers, where it outcompetes the hormonal metabolic idea, and I'm going to give you the competing hypothesis that you didn't even know existed until 
you and I talked. He started reading my stuff. And it has zero influence on how this guy thinks. He's just, he's so convinced he's right. So That's what, terrifying. That's is, terrifying when someone has that kind of influence over the American people. Well, and this is the thing. You want somebody to at least say, Jesus. I mean, can we, can we stop for one second? What are they describing? It sounds like themselves. We want somebody that's so open-minded. Oh, my God, he's so closed-minded. He doesn't want to hear. Gary, excuse me, Gary, you're the individual that has recently sponsored a study uh, to look at low-carbohydrate versus high-carbohydrate diets for fat loss, et cetera, et cetera, obesity, insulin spike, the whole nine yards. And, Gary, what, what happened? Oh, wait, you were proven wrong in that study? The one that you sponsored yourself? Oh, well, I'm sure you just changed your opinion. That, oh, wait. Nope, you did not. That's right, folks. Go Google it. Gary Taubes refuted the own, his own study that he sponsored because he felt like, well, they, there was some things wrong with the conclusions or, oh, my God, they did the thing wrong. Oh, oh. Excuse boy is what he is. Excuse boy. So I'm supposed to sit here, listen to you ramble on with Joe Rogan, who is an entertainer, so I don't hold him to the same standard as Gary Taubes, who is proclaiming himself to be this nutritional expert. <clears throat> He's just a journalist. And I'm supposed to listen to you sit here and be awed in your glory about how smart you are and that we're all dumb for believing about calories. You can't even get the simple theories right. And I'm supposed to listen to you about insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity and hormonal balances as a cause for obesity. Gary, you are quite the joke. You are the one that are super close-minded. You pay for studies. They... Come out with a conclusion that you disagree with, and therefore you come out and slam everything done in that research. That is the epitome. That is the exact example of what now you describe. I'm going to give you about 30 more seconds because I can't take this video any longer. Let's see if you're able to have a nice formulated thought in that 30 seconds before I shut it off. Let's try it. Right, no, I never thought yeah. of that. Let me at least have let me read these and get back to you is what you want him to do. You want him the problem of course is that if he agrees to this and then he agrees that you're correct, everything that he's been saying up until now has been bullshit and he's been misleading people. He has yeah, to apologize, yeah, 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 he has yeah, to yeah. Well, then, then once you do that, right. you don't you lose your crazy like ideally yeah. in science you're you know, the best scientists are the ones who say, you know, I was just All right. Well, once again, I mean that sounds to me more like Gary than us on the scientific wing, that if Gary's proven wrong, then he's the one that's going to suffer a career loss. If it comes out that, you know, this is such a crazy thing to try to argue, but if it came out definitively, and I use the word definitively, that ketosis or a ketogenic diet or a low-carb diet had a significant improvement over fat loss than a typical moderate-carb, moderate-fat, high-protein diet, then I'd be the first person to start promoting it. I feel like my switchover would be, it would not damage my reputation. I'm coming from the position that I'm looking at the facts and science and basing my opinion off of that. And so if that changes, then my opinion will change along with it, as it should. But Gary, your opinion is the one that's currently incorrect with the science and research. So you're already wrong. And yet, here you are hammering away. So there we go. I got through a Gary Tao's video. And didn't very much yell uh, a whole ton. So I think I deserve some, some brownie points, some credit there. Because I, uh, folks, I could not imagine listening to that for two and a half hours. I, I, pfft. I'm just being frank with you. That, that would be uh, mind-blowing to me. So that was about two minutes or three minutes of him speaking. So there's somebody that's a pseudo-expert um, that has a lot of influence. So pretty much everything he described, I think it describes him. And I agree, it's terrifying. Let's move on. Um, I'm just going to mess around here. I'm not going to name names. I just got a random. I just got random Facebook statuses. All right, that's it. Some are friends. Some are people I don't know. It doesn't uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, some are random. I just googled because now on there you can kind of type in like protein. What protein diet should I use? And it'll pull up statuses. So I'm going to read some uh, some some Facebook statuses, and then we're going to go through some of the responses um, that we get. And then go through the rationale and just, again, we're doing this today so that you can see that, look, opinions are everywhere. So it's not a matter of just asking Facebook universe a question and that you'll get the correct answer. I'm actually trying to prove the opposite, that if you ask questions about health and fitness to general population, 
you're going to get the wrong answer. If you ask a question, sometimes even to a quote-unquote self-proclaimed expert or health professional, you still could get the wrong answer. Trying to build off our theme last week about trusted sources, it's going to come down to you finding a trusted health and fitness, a professional source, and asking them directly, which again is what I am trying to get Ramsley Fitness to be and you know, create a new gold standard so that people can understand that this information is sensitive. Like this is affecting lives. I don't think anybody should just be out there willy-nilly giving their opinion. So here's our stats. It's called, does anyone have any advice on high blood pressure and how to get it down? Before, okay, That's a status on Facebook. Does anyone have any advice on high blood pressure and how to get it down? That's just asked to the universe, correct? So I'm going to give a background about high blood pressure just, just real quick so that everybody can understand this. Um, blood pressure is caused by a lot of things. Okay, Dietary um, intake is certainly part of it. Genetics plays a massive, massive role, more so than you would believe. Genetics actually is one of those answers that has a lot to do with everything. Your ability to be an athlete, your height, your weight, um, your body shape, your ability to put on muscle, the types of muscle you get. All of it is really, is really respondent to uh, genetics. So high blood pressure is part of that. Um, here are some of the answers we get. Some of the answers we get. Diet and exercise, dear. Watch sodium intake. And um, look, here, here's the thing about sodium intake in regards to um, high blood pressure. So sodium attracts water. So if you consume foods with salt, um, it, it tends to then, once that gets into the bloodstream, pull water into the bloodstream. It makes uh, the blood obviously uh, more th- uh, viscous, I guess is the correct word. Uh, there's just more volume inside of, of the, um, the veins and arteries and such. And also as that gets pushed through the body, it's putting more pressure on the walls of the arteries and stuff like that. And it, it, thus increasing blood pressure that's inside of the uh, inside of those transportation cells. So the idea is that, you, well, you just cut out salt and then they won't have that problem. And that's not the whole story because somebody could actually have high blood pressure and not necessarily have a salt problem or consume a lot of salt. Um, the vice versa is also true. You could also consume a lot of salt and not have blood pressure problems. Um, if you have a proper regulatory system, when you consume salt, it may temporarily increase your blood pressure, but in a proper system, it will be filtered out. Your body has feedback systems in place. It knows that uh, high blood pressure is not a positive thing and, and will uh, outsource that, that water. So people look to just blame things, and salt really gets a bad rap. Um, so unless you have a heart problem in general, so if you're just a member of the general population, maybe your blood pressure isn't even a problem. You don't need to sit there and restrict salt. You know, that, that, like, like that's a classic. You go to a Chinese place and they have low sodium soy sauce or full salt soy sauce. And, you know, if you're someone that's overall healthy, don't really have problems or not specifically being given uh, supervision by your doctor or given guidance by your doctor to cut salt, then uh, you really don't got to sit there and consume low sodium products. Just FYI. Um... Uh, here's some other advice. Lose extra pounds. My mom had it. I put her on a low carb diet. She lost 15 pounds in two weeks. 15 pounds in two weeks. It went away. Uh, so again, here's advice from somebody using anecdotal information, firsthand experience only, and um, an extreme example. Uh, there could be a lot of things that came into play to lose two, to lose 15 pounds in two weeks. Guess what? A lot of, the, especially going to be on a low carb diet, is going to be water. So. Um, Not necessarily going to be like body fat, which to me is what the implication here is. Um, It says, look up a keto diet or no-carb diet. You can lose a ridiculous amount of weight, and it will get rid of blood pressure and put some type of diabetes into remission. I put my mom on it. She's lost 30 pounds in two months. Six months, she was down 45 pounds. So again, just just pushing keto diet for, for the salvation of everything. That's something we see all the time. Somebody says, this may seem dumb, but how is his temper? I know some people get all worked up over simple things. Maybe he should try yoga. Definitely exercise, even if it's only walking for 10 minutes. Um, what was his blood pressure? Uh, I guess at one point in time it was super high. I don't know. Just Let's just move on here. <laughs> Somebody said, quit having fun. Nice option. 
Keep calm, stay away from salty things. The dark may put you on meds if it stays high. No? Well, there's that. So, I mean, like, to, to ask into the ether of Facebook, you know, hey, my relative has high blood pressure, how should we get rid of it? I mean, that's something you should ask your doctor, number one. Uh, you could ask a trusted health professional source, but even even me, if, I got, if I'm asked that question, I may give some very, very generic advice, super generic, but I would always say go talk to your doctor. I mean, that's, that's the number one source, not Facebook. Um, just an example there. You saw everything from temper issues to salt to keto to – I mean you just get it over and over and over and over and over again. Here's another status I found. Uh, what uh, What's the healthiest post-workout protein? What is the healthiest post-workout protein? Uh, first comment is uh, blue bonnet or organic grass-fed. This person likes the blue bonnet whey and casein, and casein blend protein. Well, here's the problem. Organic protein powder is probably one of the biggest wastes of money that you could ever do. Let me explain briefly. Um, so when you buy organic, um, let's say for, you know, for organic meat, okay, you are paying extra for the fat content. The fat content in organic beef is uh, significantly better quality than that of non-organic. Okay? Uh, we're talking higher levels of CLA, better omega ratios. And it is going to have uh, the hormones and antibiotics and probiotics and all the other stuff that they pump up the, uh, the cattle with uh, removed. So when it comes to organic beef, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, but I do think you should buy organic beef with fat content in it, obviously. Um, if you were to ever buy organic, like 93 or like 95.5 split, like 95% fat free, that is one of the biggest mistakes you could possibly do because you're paying for organic uh, meat in which the fat content, the very nice nutritious fat content now is being thrown away. Uh, it's not being included in your pack of meat. So again, that's, that, that's not good. Um, now the protein pro- uh, process and how they get like whey, right? It's a filtering process. It's in an isolation process. Hence the words like whey isolate, right? They're able to filter out Protein specifically from dairy sources, uh, whey is found in dairy, and they're able to filter out the fat and carbs. And essentially, you're having the straight protein from the food. It's not like creating a laboratory. Protein powder is just very, very isolated forms and isolated uh, components of dairy food. So they get the protein out of it. Well, guess what? If you're paying for organic dairy and then trying, or if you're trying to get organic protein powder, guess what? That Benefit, again, from the, orga- from the organic uh, process is going to be in the fat. And guess what? You're filtering out the fat again. It's the same thing. So you're paying extra for a protein powder with no real additional benefit. And then someone may say, well, what about the hormones and the, uh, the antibiotics? Well, guess what? The filtering system for whey protein is going to take care of that. Again, it's going to filter out a lot of that stuff, if not all of it. So again, you're paying for an extra process that does it's not necessary. So that's the biggest problem I have, but everybody thinks organic across the board for everything is always better. Somebody else recommends whey protein isolate with stevia, and the product is about time. About time sucks. I don't like about time. Uh, again, overpriced crap that um, you know wants to go through all these processes and all oh, this. Meanwhile, it gets, all the good stuff's filtered out again. Uh, let's see here. You're going to get 50 different answers from 50 different people. Best to give, uh, you know, try out things and, you know, best answer is to give as many as you can a shot and find out what you like. Uh, that's actually pretty pretty solid advice. This person says, I'm biased towards caged muscle. I believe in Chris Gethin and what a supplement does. Food. Somebody says food. Um, somebody says, my best results are from soy protein. Oh boy, this is a great one here. So, so he says soy pro- so, uh, soy protein. So soy, soy protein digests at about a medium pace uh, in comparison to like whey protein, which is fast, and then casein, which digests slowly. Soy is um, would be in between those. So it's got some advantages and some disadvantages. I think you know after a workout, um, whey protein ha- happens to kind of get in there quickly, digest it and into the bloodstream, and then off shut you know shut it off to the muscle cells. That's its advantage is how quickly it can be digested. So soy protein wouldn't hit that as compared to a whey. 
But the funny part is somebody comments and says, research shows correlation with elevated estrogen levels, whey is gold standard and cheap. Well, the soy protein thing and estrogen, that's not a thing. I, I have seen that. I've seen this a million times. It's not a real thing. Like you consuming soy is not going to make a man turn into a female, right? And I know I'm being a little facetious here and being a little dramatic. But the, the, the idea that if you, can, if you consume something like edamame, which is soy, soybeans, uh, a soy protein powder, if you consume it, that you're going to be more – you're going to lower your testosterone and increase your estrogen and turn, you know, to really turn off your male genes and stuff, it's completely fabricated. It's uh, very extreme. Um, gold way is gold standard and cheap. I mean, it depends. I mean, everybody's so absolute about things. Somebody says healthiest, as in what? Most are simple way isolate with some dextrose. Uh, okay, moving on. It's not even about health; it's about advertised protein content compared to actual and your personal digestibility of it. I found that optimum nutrition gold standard way in case I'm doing the best, whatever. Uh, you know, here's another recommendation. I heard once upon a time that eggs and worms were a good source of protein. Uh, congratulations. Um, so again, you get a million different answers, and uh, good luck filtering through that and finding out what you should actually buy because you have everything on here from beef protein. Um, so you know, pre uh, soy, plant based. Uh, way casein, I mean, a gazillion different answers. Lastly, this one really annoys me. This one super annoys me. It's those individuals that are uh, beach body fanatics. These, <laughs> these self-proclaimed now health and fitness experts. Although, hey, hold on, asterisk. Well, we're not really claiming to be experts. We just want to help people. Right, got it. Um, I have a photo uh, in front of me, which. Uh, Again, my head is hurting. This may induce a yell. Warning. This may induce a yell. <clears throat> it's an individual who has uh, cut in half their pant size. Well, that's great. Congratulations. I can't believe how easy this is. Let me read that again. Quote, I can't believe how easy this is. In just three days... Lost four pounds, two inches off the waist, one off the hips. It's only three days, folks, and it was so easy. You've got to be kidding me. The fact that these folks think they're helping people by propagandizing this sort of crap and telling people fitness is easy, you can get results in three days, makes me want to reach through my computer screen grab you, steal all your beach body, pour it in a sewer, and let you wash and cry. I cannot stand this. What this is, this is nothing more than an individual that has zero comprehension of science. They don't understand how weight loss works. You are not going to lose four pounds of body fat in three days, which is what I argue and what everybody with a brain argues is what you should want to lose if you're losing weight. And I know technically this person didn't say I lost four pounds of fat. It's insinuated. It's damn insinuated. It's so easy, easy this, easy that. Well, tell all the clients that we work with that struggle for months and for years with weight loss battle and only through forming new habits for the long haul, a.k.a. the rest of their life, they are able to achieve the results that they've always been seeking. They've sought this quick, fast crap. I would love to say, hey, well, in 14 days, what's that weight at? You keeping that weight off? The answer is no. Most likely it's a no. Four pounds in three days. It's so easy. I can't stand this. And this is to be... This is to be told that this is all in the name of helping people. This does nothing. This photo and this, oh, this bullcrap information does nothing but make people feel guilty about where they currently are and that it's easy. Why can't you get it done? Why can't you do it? All you got to do is buy my product that I'm selling. Come buy it. I can't stand marketing and sales. It ruins everything. Three days. Three-day healthy meal cleanse. 
Jeez, I would love to tell this person. I would love, I would love, 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 love for you to go through a body, a true body fat percentage test. Go through a three-day cleanse. And then when you lose four pounds, redo the test. And let's see how much is from fat. Let's just see. And of course, there's comments that only drive this beast further with ferocity. Fantastic! This is meant to be a compliment. Ah, oh, so exciting. Great job. Great results. Nice attitude. Can't do these. They have the opposite. That's how much I, you know, blah, 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 blah. 57 likes on the photo. Ah, uh, man. Well, that about, the, that about does it for me today. I have had enough. This will be, this will be really, really tough to do in real life. I mean, I am a... Uh, I don't want to be teasing it quite yet. Uh, it's not that I really care, but there will be a fitness conference that I'll be speaking at in Pittsburgh um, in a couple months in May. And there will be an extensive Q&A section, I, is my understanding of it. And I, I, I very much look forward to it. Uh, I love q and I absolutely, <laughs> absolutely like it um, because it allows you to give people action steps, right? To me, like the people that get scared of Q&A are people that like, can't give you answers or are scared that they're going to give you the wrong answer. If you know what you're talking about, you know, if you're in the correct field of study and you're doing Q and a, uh, it'll be easy. It's what, it's, it's, it's what I do every day. Like a lot of the questions are going to be from clients or from other business owners or, th- you know, things that I've already gone through, things that I give advice on on a daily basis. And, um, it, it, it's, it's nice because you can give people like, like literally, like literally step one, do this step two, do that. Uh, as opposed to sometimes if I'm just giving a podcast like today's information or any other podcast information, just very generic info and, and basic. And some people will take action steps and some people might not. Love the Q&A. But um, it'll be – if I were to get a lot of questions of this caliber like, hey, you know, I sell Beachbody. I, lo- I did a three-day cleanse and I lost four pounds. Like why would you not sell this, Fran? Like those kind of questions, if I were to get a lot of those – I would treat the same way I do in this podcast. I'm not going to shut it down from somebody just because it's, it's another individual. Uh, but two, one too many of those, I'd probably have a headache. I probably would have a headache trying to walk through that with somebody. And uh, same thing with Gary Tobbs. You know, if, if, if I were to take a question from like a, a keto fiend, you know, somebody that's super thinks the insulin resistance model is the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know, trying to walk through the logic with them, I would doubt the capability of them to understand it because of their position. They're so entrenched. Um, they really think they're correct. Like they truly believe it now, and they're really turning blind eyes to even their own studies, as we talked about earlier today. Uh, you know, I just think that that's a conversation that goes circle, 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 and it end up me saying, "Look, dude, here's my answer. Like, I'm not going to sit here and talk to you all day about it." So I had fun today on the podcast. I hope you found this one a little more light than our other ones. It's a little bit. It's meant to be entertaining and just just to give just to get you that piece of information to to make sure you guys remember that it's uh information's everywhere. It's about what source it's coming from, not necessarily that somebody answered you. So uh, we look forward to having you all uh, follow our, our podcast. Continue to do that. Randomlyfitness.com, and we look forward to seeing you next week.